this is my three and a half inch drum and lathe. Uh, I've drum brothers of Surrey. Um, they're quite a rare lathe, really, uh, to be used nowadays. I found a couple of people which use them still. Um, when I got this, it came complete with the treadle, and it's all built up quite nice. I've got it, most of the original parts. Um, it's in remarkably good condition considering its age. I think it must not have had much uh, use in its previous owner. Um, bought it at an auction, and I'm, it, I've started using it for most of my stuff. This is a vertical slide, which I've uh, it's a vertical slide which I started making for it. Um, I converted this from an old lathe, which I got in bits. This cross slide, and it's actually um, the uh, the tool post bit from it. Uh, that gives me the vertical movement and with a little bit more work that should be really good um, I've got all the threading attachments for it and that does work and I've done some threading on it it was a bit of an interesting thing doing some threading as this is all exposed so you, you sort of have to remember that you've got everything here with no guards on it or anything so you do have to be careful what you're doing um, yeah, I use that for most of my lathe work now. And it's very useful, really. And I and I've also I bought a more type one chuck for it. And I now use that with my uh, lathe. And I also bought some other bits and bobs at the same time. And, I, and overall, I'm very pleased with it. I've I, when I bought it I even had the original leather belt which came with it which I wouldn't dare use but I think it was definitely what was used with it originally when it had the treadle and I uh, made, I bought some uh, a special belt which you could uh, clip together in lengths and I now use that on it and I had to use some a type of belt which was detachable because of this piece here which means you can't put a belt round the lathe very easily um, and it makes life pretty hard because you have to be careful with the size belt that you use because it catches on the top and the bottom round uh, round here and it works quite nicely now, actually. I'm quite. Uh, it's. Uh, and I'm able to get good speeds, and with the back gear, I'll get about. Uh, what do I get? About sort of six different speeds, if not that sort of seven or eight, because I've got a uh, back, a uh, back, a secondary shaft here, which means I can get a few more different speeds off that. I've actually fitted a motor off an old industrial sewing machine. Which means I'm able to uh, use the lathe. It's got quite a lot of grunt behind it. It's a uh, one horsepower. It's even got a clutch. It's even got a clutch on it, which means I can uh, disengage and engage the motor very quickly. It's very useful when you're doing uh, things like threads or things where you where you uh, where I like to stop the thing. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased with it. The only problem with doing threads is it's hard to know when to pick up the thread, um, simply because there's no indication like you uh, would, I forget what they're called, um, which tell you where the head is. Um, and you engage the uh, cross slide by this lever here, which engages a cab which then turns the this handle here at the same time with it. There's no separate movement for the uh, cross slide apart from off this. So that's a uh, slight restriction. But it still functions perfectly well. It's, uh, it holds quite nice large pieces. I've got a plate for it, I've got a three jaw chuck for it, and I've got a four jaw chuck for it. So I've got most of the things I need really. Um, this is my drum lathe. I thought I'd better show you it actually being used. 
Um, so if I switch on the motor now, you can hear that start. If I engage the chuck, uh, so the clutch, that goes quite nicely. Um, so it's got quite a good pickup. So I can, you know, it, it's, I don't have to wait for it to slow down and stop. Um, if I show you the uh, back gear, dragging the gauge quite simply, he says. Back gear, once it's engaged, it requires this nut to be loosened, which then disengages the chuck, the chuck from the belt. So if the back gear isn't engaged, it's then free. But once you engage the uh, back gear, it then acts as a reduction. I think it's a half speed reduction, I think. So then when I engage the chuck, it's much slower. Um, that's what you tend to need to use when you're doing thread cutting or a lot of things. And this slave's very good because I can do a lot of thread cutting with it. Um, so, if I engage the clutch now, the uh, slides can now move in. And with the cam inside of here, it's when I move this lever, disengages the cam, stops the uh, bed from moving. But the gears are still engaged. So you, when you, when you're thread cutting and you want to engage the uh, slides, you don't engage any gears. You just engage this. Uh, what's it called the bit here? We'll call it the bit. So I can't remember the name. Uh, so, uh, so that's my drum and lathe. Really, um, I can do a heck of a lot of stuff on it. Uh, as I said earlier, I've got my vertical slide. And this plate is off the back of an old Rover. Uh, not quite literally, it's a Rover car. It, need, it needed this plate for a tow bar. Um, and there was only these four holes, so I've drilled these extra four. And this then secures to my cross slide, uh, my vertical slide attachment. And I'm going to cut this when I get a chance so I've got a nice four inch piece here which I want to use for a uh, four way tool post it leads me on nicely like that, to my current tool post which is the and move it, <laughs> which is I think the original um, and what I've been doing recently is this is the bolt which came with the tool post and I needed to make a copy of this for my uh, vertical slide and you'll see it's got a little indent here so that will slide nicely okay, let me just turn it uh, so this is the bolt which holds down a piece of work onto the bed but you'll see I've got some extra bolts here and this is one that I've made and you can see it's very similar to this one I made this indent here so it will go into the T slots with a file but I turned the thread on the lathe by using a uh, so one revolution of the head is one revolution of the uh, cross slide so I get the same uh, thread and this is and so if you use the same theory for that that's also the thread which is on the chuck so you can turn um, chuck heads with tapers so you can make something that will fit onto that thread there by the same way so I turned it on the lathe I'm pretty pleased with that but the first time I've ever done any threading on a lathe and it turned out quite well really um, I think it's very uh, quite a good achievement really but it all works very nicely I'm very pleased with it and it's, I've never failed to be amazed how well made it is and, and how good a condition it's in 
there's, there's very little wear. I, I have looked a little bit at the bearings in various places. The bearings in, in the uh, uh, head of the lathe seem very good. And I'm, I'm reluctant to take the bearings out to fiddle with them to check them too much because it sort of knocks out your, your does it mean I'd have to set them all up again? Um, I did find a slight problem in the tailstock in that there's a bolt which occurs the tailstock down on because so, it will move so you can adjust it. And there's a bolt which it touches that, and that bolt had been replaced by the previous owner, and that bolt was too long, um, and that would rub against the bed of the lathe, leaving a mark, leaving a mark but also meant that the tailstock was slightly lifting up. So when I got two centers, I put them together and checked to see if they were correctly aligned, which is quite a good test to do if you recently got a lathe. Here's a center. This is a more staple one center. Um, and that will, that will fit into the head of the lathe, and that also fits into the tailstock. I've got two, put them together, and saw if there's a discrepancy because it's the two points where, where they meet and there was so I found that that problem out by doing that um, always use something to protect your bed when using a lathe say so oh, something that you sort of always ought to remember is, is I've got a few little marks now on the bed of my lathe and they irritate me so much you know and it, it's a sit and they're silly little marks and they and they can become a problem when you're moving um, this cross slide because any, any sort of uh, bits out of your bed of your lathe can cause uh, discrepancies when, when you turn and they can cause problems. So you you really got to look after your lathe and always oil it and clean, keep it clean and, that's how, and hopefully this will last another sort of 80 years.